London has always been known for its grand railway terminals. Giant architectural gems that not only provide an image into Britain's transport past, but continue to play an important functional role for millions of travellers per year. Despite their importance though, not every London terminal station has survived into the 21st century, perhaps the most famous to be lost being Broad Street, situated immediately adjacent to Liverpool Street Station on the northern edge of the historic city of London, a once bustling suburban terminus that became an unfortunate victim of circumstance. The existence of Broad Street Station is owed to the creation of the North London Railway, a rail corridor developed by the London and Birmingham Railway in order to reach the Thames Docklands of the East End, thus resulting in a new eight-mile line running from the North Western Railway's Camden Town Station to the West India Docks at Blackwall. Originally conceived as a freight-only route, following the opening of the first five miles of the line between Islington and Bow on September 26, 1850, a passenger service was introduced with intermediate stations at Hackney and Kingsland, while a six-road locomotive shed was opened at Bow in 1850, this also being the site of a connection with the London and Blackwall line, so as to allow trains access to Fenchurch Street Station. Once the final extension to Camden had been pushed through, now allowing for direct freight access between the London and North Western Railway's main line to Birmingham and the Docklands, the firm was eager to also provide a goods station within the historic city of London, and thus the construction of a branch south from Dalston Junction to Broad Street was authorised under the North London Railway Act of July 22, 1861, creating a two-mile spur that required the demolition of numerous properties in Shoreditch and Haggerston, while excavation of the station itself unearthed a large burial ground, likely related to the plague or burial pits from the Bethlehem Hospital. At a cost of £1.2 million, or £116 million in 2021, the station was formally opened on November 1, 1865, as the terminus of the North London Railway commuter network west towards Camden and Wilsdon, and east towards Poplar, the terminus consisting of seven platforms and three approach tracks, while the station building comprised a 250-foot-long frontage constructed from white Suffolk brick and Peterhead granite, and sported a 75-foot-tall clock tower and two overall roofs that extended down the platforms. While constructing both the passenger and freight facilities at Broad Street was expensive, the costs were quickly recovered thanks to the huge success of the extension of commuter services into the city, with passenger traffic doubling to nearly 14 million on the North London Railway within a year, thereby demanding the installation of a fourth approach track to Broad Street in 1874, the creation of an eighth platform in 1891, and a ninth platform, outside the cover of the two station roofs, in 1913. In terms of passenger operations, the primary role of Broad Street was for commuter trains, and for the next 50 years, a 15-minute service ran from Broad Street over the Poplar Line, another 15-minute service ran to Hampstead Road, calling at all stations, while a third train ran semi-fast to Camden, with alternate trains running on to Watford and Richmond. The success and convenience of the terminal also gave rise to long-distance trains, initially with the Great Northern Railway, using the terminal to supplement its own facilities at King's Cross a new core to the Great Northern Main Line being built by the North London Railway between Canonbury and Finsbury Park, while on February 1st, 1910, the London and North Western Railway introduced the city-to-city -city service between Broad Street, Coventry, Birmingham New Street and Wolverhampton High Level. The peak came for the terminus in 1896, with 46.3 million people using the North London Railway, making it the third busiest terminus in London behind the neighbouring Liverpool Street and Victoria but decline came rapidly as the tram network began to be expanded into the suburbs, followed by the newly established underground railway system, and by 1921 only 11.4 million passengers were using the line. To try and improve the efficiency of their services, and to compete with the underground, the line from Broad Street to Richmond was electrified in 1916 to a 600-volt DC conductor rail system, and while World War I had little effect on the performance of the terminal, aside from minor bomb damage caused by a Zeppelin air raid in September 1915, World War II is truly where the beginning of the end came for the station. With the outbreak of war against Nazi Germany in 1939, the few remaining Great Northern services to Broad Street, now operated by the LNER, were cut, while the station itself received significant damage during the Blitz of October 3, 1940, with the approach tracks being put out of commission and thus closing the station for several days, followed by similar disruption on October 13th and November 11th. As for service patterns, Trains to Shoreditch ended in 1940, followed by the loss of trains to Poplar in May 1944, and while a number of peak season mainline trains to Cambridge used Broad Street to take pressure off King's Cross in the early 1950s, it was clear the terminus was facing severe deterioration, its only consistent services being a handful of commuter trains. This was compounded by a general downturn in train travel as cars and buses began to gain popularity, 
meaning that investment in the upkeep of the terminal facilities at Broad Street was severely lacking, the Grand Station building being closed in 1956, while the overall station roof was cut back in 1967 when it was deemed unsafe, leaving only the city ends of the platforms covered. By the mid-60s, competition from other, more convenient terminals, together with the ever-present London Underground, meant only 41 trains arrived at Broad Street during the three-hour morning peak, with an average number of 6,400 rush-hour passengers using the station, thereby bringing the line and station to the attention of the Beeching Report, which, while not recommending full closure of the terminus, required that its service patterns be reduced, followed in 1969 by the loss of its goods operations. By 1976, only four platforms were left in use, and the peak hour trains to the East Coast Main Line were withdrawn when the former Northern City Line was converted from London Underground to National Rail use, providing another direct connection to the city at Moorgate, a far more convenient alternative. The malaise outlook of Broad Street reflected in its overgrown condition, with the former track bed of the closed platforms now lost to vegetation, while what was once the goods tracks had been converted for use as a car park. This decline finally culminated in 1979, with British Rail being granted planning permission to redevelop railway land at the Broad Street and Liverpool Street stations, selling the entirety of the Broad Street site for commercial properties, while also offloading the air rights to the approach tracks at Liverpool Street, essentially turning the ends of the platforms, beyond the station roof, into an underground station. Therefore, the process began to transfer the former North London Railway commuter services from Broad Street to Liverpool Street, and by 1985, only 6,000 passengers were using the station per week, a number that dropped rapidly once the cross-London service to Richmond was diverted away on May 13th of that year, leaving only the peak hour Watford Junction trains. Demolition of the station began in phases, with the city ends of the platforms and the station buildings being closed off and torn down, while the far end of what was formerly Platform 5 remained in use for Watford trains, and was only accessible from a temporary footpath and overbridge connecting to Liverpool Street Station that ran through the former yard complex. Services to Broad Street continued until June 27, 1986, when the last North London Line trains, operated by Class 313s, made their final journeys to and from Watford, with full closure of the station and the intermediate station at Dalston Junction following on June 30th, the few remains of this once bustling terminus cleared by the end of the year. Today, no trace of the former Broad Street station exists, the entire site having been redeveloped into the Broadgate financial hub of central London, although part of the former Broad Street approach line between Dalston Junction and Shoreditch, including Dalston Junction Station itself, was reopened in 2011 as part of the London Overground extension between the North London Line and the East London Line, providing direct services between the northwest and southeast of the city. As for Broad Street itself, the station, while an architectural marvel in keeping with the other London terminals, was one that faced a protracted demise from an early age, as due to the rapid expansion of the underground tram and bus networks, as well as the presence of many other more conveniently located terminus stations, it simply couldn't compete, and its eventual closure in the face of falling railway profits was assured. <laughs>